The War of the Worlds 1898 is a science fiction novel by H. G. Wells. It describes the memoirs of an unnamed narrator in the suburbs of Woking, Surrey, England, who recounts an invasion of Earth by an army of Martians with military technology far in advance to human science. It is said to be the first story that details a human conflict with, and overall defeat by, an extraterrestrial race. Following its publication, The War of the Worlds rapidly entered popular culture. Through the 20th and 21st centuries, the novel has been adapted in various media, including radio, television, and film. These have been produced with varying degrees of faithfulness to the original text, with many of the more famous adaptations, such as Orson Welles' 1938 radio adaptation and the 2005 film directed by Steven Spielberg, choosing to set the events in a contemporary setting. In addition, many adaptations, including both of the above, relocated the location from its original setting of England in favor of the United States. The most recent adaptation of this type was produced in Canada and broadcast on Britain's BBC Autumn 2013 and BBC America Summer 2014 for the centenary of World War I. It posits the Martian invasion as the Great Martian War 1913–1917, with the Martians invading Earth, first falling on Germany, and then expanding their war on mankind throughout Western Europe. Topic. Films 1953, The War of the Worlds 1953 film, produced by George Pal and directed by Byron Haskin, for Paramount Pictures 1981, The War of the Worlds, Next Century, a Polish film by Piotr Sulkin 2005, War of the Worlds 2005 film, directed by Steven Spielberg, for Paramount Pictures 2005, H. G. Wells' The War of the Worlds 2005 film, directed by Timothy Hines, for Pendragon Pictures 2005, H. G. Wells' War of the Worlds 2005 film, directed by David Michael Latt titled Invasion or the Worlds in War Internationally, for The Asylum. 2008, War of the Worlds 2, The Next Wave, sequel to The Asylum's film, directed by C. Thomas Howell, 2012 Alien Dawn, based very loosely on H. G. Wells' The War of the Worlds set in Los Angeles, directed by Neil Johnson 2012, War of the Worlds, The True Story a sci-fi, horror mockumentary, by Pendragon Pictures 2012, War of the Worlds, Goliath, animated sequel set 15 years after the Wells novel 2013, The Great Martian War 1913–1917, a science fiction docudrama told in the format of an episode on the History Channel on the centennial of the first year of the war to end all wars, related 1975, The Night That Panicked America, a film that follows Orson Welles' radio broadcast based on Welles' novel. 1990, Spaced Invaders, a comic film directed by Patrick Reed Johnson in which Martians land in a small Illinois town at the same time as the local radio station is rebroadcasting Orson Welles' radio drama. 1996, Mars Attacks, a science fiction comedy by Tim Burton, which spoofs many alien invasion films of the 1950s, including 1953's The War of the Worlds, 1996, Independence Day is a sci-fi action film that, in addition to dealing with a similar large-scale invasion of Earth by extraterrestrials, pays homage by having a computer virus be that which disrupts the aliens, an update to the pathogens that caused the downfall of the aliens in the original Wells' work. 2006, Scary Movie 4, a spoof comedy that uses Steven Spielberg's film version as its plot. 2017, Brave New Jersey, a comedy about a New Jersey town impacted by the Orson Welles broadcast. Television 
1988, War of the Worlds TV series loosely based on Wells' novel, but is mainly a sequel to the 1953 film. 1993, a planned animated series to be produced by New World Action Animation, a sister division to New World Animation Limited formerly Marvel Productions and subsidiary of New World Entertainment 2001, Justice League animated TV series adapts the main events and visuals of the novel for the three-part story Secret Origins. Aliens, after destroying Mars, attack Earth via tripods and a team of superheroes, including Superman, attempt to stop them. 2019, The War of the Worlds, an upcoming three-episode miniseries produced by Mammoth Screen for the BBC. 2019, an upcoming eight-episode reboot. Written by Howard Overman and produced by Fox Networks Group Europe and Africa in partnership with Canal Plus. The series will be set in the present day and tell the story of an alien invasion. Topic Radio 1938, The War of the Worlds Radio, the Orson Welles 1938 radio adaptation, script by Howard E. Koch. 1944, War of the Worlds Radio Broadcast, Santiago. 1949, War of the Worlds Radio Broadcast, Radio Quito, Quito, Ecuador. 1950, The War of the Worlds, BBC Radio Dramatization adapted from the novel by John Manship White, six episodes. 1955, The Lux Radio Theatre, War of the Worlds, adaptation of the 1953 film. 1967, The War of the Worlds, BBC Radio dramatization using the 1950 John Manship White script, six episodes. 1968, The War of the Worlds, Radio 1968, WKBW radio adaptation. 1971, War of the Worlds Radio Broadcast, Radio Difusora, São Luís, Brazil. 1988, The War of the Worlds, an NPR 50th anniversary radio adaptation with Jason Robards, using a slightly updated version of the Howard E. Koch, script. 2002, The War of the Worlds, Glenn Beck's Mercury Radio Arts recreates the 1938 program live on Halloween 2002, using exactly the same Howard E. Koch script as Orson Welles. The program was sponsored by Bill's Car Keys. 2005, La Guerra de los Mundos, radio broadcast, rock and pop, Santiago, Chile, broadcast as promotion of the 2005 movie. 2017, The War of the Worlds, BBC Radio Dramatization adapted from the novel by Melissa Murray, two episodes. 2018, The Coming of the Martians, Colin Morgan stars in a faithful audio dramatization of the original 1897 story by Sherwood Sound Studios and produced in 5.1 surround sound. 2018, The Martian Invasion of Earth, an audio drama adaptation for Big Finish Productions, adapted by Nicholas Briggs, and starring Richard Armitage and Lucy Briggs Owen. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Music. 1978, Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds by Jeff Wayne. 2009, War of the Worlds, by Mark Browd 2012, Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds, The New Generation, by Jeff Wayne 2018, War of the Worlds, pt. 1, by Michael Romeo <laughs> Game 1979, 1982, The War of the Worlds arcade game, an arcade game published by Cinematronics, and its re-released color version. 1980, The War of the Worlds, a war board game designed by Alan D. Eldridge and published by Task Force Games. 1984, The War of the Worlds 1984 computer game, a home computer game based on Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds 
1998, Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds, real-time strategy computer game. 1999, Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds, vehicular combat PlayStation game. 2011, The War of the Worlds, a 2D action, platform game narrated by Patrick Stewart. Topic: Comic books. 1946–1947, Edgar P. Jacobs produced an adaptation in the pages of the Le Journal de Tintin. An album released in 1986 was published by Dargaud. 1955, Classics Illustrated No. 124, a comic book adaptation of the book, 1973 to 1976, Amazing Adventures hash 18 to 39 featured Kilraven, a 21st century freedom fighter against a second Martian invasion. 1977, Marvel Classics Comics number no. 14, a comic book adaptation of the book. 1999, Superman: War of the Worlds, events of the Wells book transferred to Superman's Metropolis and also involve Lois Lane and Lex Luthor. 2002-2003, Volume 2 of The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, a limited series comic book written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Kevin O'Neill. 2006, H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds comic graphic novel. 2002 present, Scarlet Traces, a sequel to the novel appearing in 2000 AD, written by Ian Edgington and illustrated by Disraeli. Topic: Other. 1994, War of the Worlds: Invasion from Mars, an audio theater adaption by LA Theater Works, casting Star Trek cast members like Leonard Nimoy, Gates McFadden, Brent Spinner, and directed by John Delancey. 2004-2005, H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, a site-specific theatre adaptation by Canadian playwright Ian Case staged in and around Craig Darrick Castle in Victoria, British Columbia. 2005, The Art of H. G. Wells by Ricardo Garajo, the third in the series of trading cards, released 2008, Solar Ponds's War of the Worlds, an online web serial set in the world of Solar Ponds, combining elements of the original novel, the 1938 radio adaptation, and the Wells short story The Crystal Egg. 2017, War of the Worlds 2017, a mixed web media story primarily told through Twitter, centered on a modern group of characters while retaining concepts from the original novel. Topic: 1938 radio adaptation by Orson Welles. Orson Welles's 1938 radio broadcast on the Mercury Theatre on the Air purportedly caused public outcry, as many listeners believed that an actual Martian invasion was in progress. Although the reality of the panic is disputed, as the program had relatively few listeners, the radio drama itself has spun off a number of productions based upon the events surrounding the broadcast, including Doctor Who: Invaders from Mars, an audio drama released in 2000. And two based upon the Doctor Who television series that depicts Wells's broadcast as taking place during an actual attempted alien invasion. Topic: 1953 first film adaptation by George Pal. George Pal's film adaptation has many notable differences from H. G. Wells' novel. The closest resemblance is probably that of the antagonists. The film's aliens are indeed Martians, and invade Earth for the same reasons as those from the novel The State of Mars suggests that it is in the final stages of being able to support life, leading to the Martians' decision to make Earth their new home. They land on Earth in the same way, by crashing to the Earth. 
However, the book's spacecraft are large cylinder-shaped projectiles fired from the Martian surface from some kind of cannon, instead of the film's meteor-like spaceships, but the Martians emerge from their craft in the same way, by unscrewing a large, round hatch. They appear to have no use for humans in the film. In the novel they are observed directly feeding on humans by draining their victims' blood using pipettes. There is also a speculation about them eventually using human slaves to hunt down all remaining human survivors after the Martians conquer Earth. In the film the Martians do not bring the novel's fast-growing red weed with them, but they are defeated by Earth microorganisms, as observed in the novel. However, they die from the effects of the microorganisms within three days of the landing of the first meteor ship. In the novel, the Martians die within about three weeks of their invasion of England. The Martians themselves bear no physical resemblance to the novel's Martians. The novel's aliens are bear sized, bulky creatures whose bodies are described as merely heads with a beak like mouth, 16 tentacles, and two luminous, disc-like eyes". Their film counterparts are short, reddish-brown creatures with two long, thin arms with three long suction cup-like fingers. The Martian's head, if it can be called that, is a broad face at the top front of its broad-shouldered upper torso, the only apparent feature of which is a single large eye with three distinctly colored lenses. The Martians' lower extremities, whatever they may be, are never shown. Some speculative designs for the creature suggest the idea of three thin legs resembling their fingers, while others show them as a biped with short, stubby legs with three toed feet. The film's Martian war machines do actually have more of a resemblance than they may seem at first glance. The book's machines are tripods and carry the heat ray projector on an articulated arm connected to the front of the war machine's main body. The film's machines are deliberately shaped like manta rays, with a bulbous, elongated green window at the front, through which the aliens observe their surroundings. On top of the machine is the cobra-like heat ray attached to a long, narrow, neck-like extension. They can be mistaken for flying machines, but Dr. Forrester states that they are lifted by invisible legs. In one scene, when the first machine emerges, you can see faint traces of three energy legs beneath and three sparking traces where the three energy shafts touch the burning ground. Therefore, technically speaking, the film's war machines are indeed tripods, though they are never given that designation. Whereas the novel's war machines had no protection against British Army and Navy cannon fire, the film's war machines have a force field surrounding them. This invisible shield is described by Dr. Forrester as a protective blister. The Martian weaponry is also partially unchanged. The heat ray has the very same effect as that of the novel. However, the novel's heat ray is briefly described as having a spinning disc held up by a mechanical arm when first seen, it fires in a wide arc while still in the pit where the Martians first land. The film's heat ray is shaped like a cobra's hood with a single, red pulsing eye, which possibly acts like a targeting telescope for the Martians. The book describes another weapon, the black smoke used to kill all life, the war machines fire projectiles containing a black powder through a bazooka-like tube accessory. The black powder when dispersed seems to have the same effect on life as the mustard gas of the First World War. This weapon is replaced in the film by the skeleton beam, which fires green pulsing bursts of energy from the tips of the manta ray body. The skeleton beams cause objects and people to disintegrate. The plot of the film is very different from the novel. The novel tells the story of a late 19th century journalist who journeys through Victorian London and environs while the Martians attack, eventually being reunited with his wife. The film's protagonist is a California scientist who falls in love with a college instructor after the Martian attack begins. However, certain points of the plot are similar to the novel, from the crash landing of the Martian meteor ships to their eventual defeat by Earth's microorganisms. 
Dr. Forrester also goes through some of which befalls the book's narrator, like his ordeal in a destroyed house and seeing an actual Martian up close. The film is given more of a Cold War theme, with its use of the atomic bomb against the enemy and the mass destruction that such a global war would inflict on mankind. <laughs> Unreleased adaptations After World War II, Ray Harryhausen shot a scene of a dying alien falling out of a Martian war machine, test footage for an abandoned project to adapt the story using Wells' original, octopus, concept for the Martians. A video of the footage can be found here. Here Harryhausen talks about his proposed adaptation. Yes, originally, after Mighty Joe Young, I made a lot of sketches for War of the Worlds. I wanted to keep it in the period that H.G. Wells wrote it, of the Victorian period, and I made eight big drawings, some of which are published, in the book and it would have been an interesting picture, if it was made years ago. But since then so many pictures of that nature have been made that it wouldn't be quite unique as it would have been. <laughs> Sequels by other authors. Within six weeks of the novel's original 1897 magazine serialization, the Boston Post began running a sequel, Edison's Conquest of Mars by Garrett P. Service, about an Earth counterattack against the Martians, led by Thomas Edison. Though this is actually a sequel to Fighters from Mars, a revised and UN authorized reprint, they both were first printed in the Boston Post in 1898. In 1962, Soviet author Laser Lagan published a political pamphlet named Major Well and You. Major Well and You, a pun on Well and You, which relates the story of a major in the British Army who collaborates with the Martian invaders. A condemnation of imperialism and capitalism, the story was dominated by Soviet analysis of political issues contemporary to the 1950s and 1960s. The Second War of the Worlds, by George H. Smith concerned the Martians trying to invade an alternate, less technologically advanced Earth. Helping these people are an unnamed English detective, and his companion, a doctor, from our world. It is quite obvious from clues in the story that these are actually Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson. In the 1970s, Marvel Comics had a character named Killraven, warrior of the worlds who in an alternative timeline fought H.G. Wells Martians after their second invasion of Earth in 2001. He first appeared in Amazing Adventures Vol. 2 No. 18. Manly Wade Wellman and his son Wade Wellman wrote Sherlock Holmes' War of the Worlds 1975, which describes Sherlock Holmes's adventures during the Martian occupation of London. This version uses Wells' short story, The Crystal Egg, as a prequel with Holmes being the man who bought the egg at the end and includes a crossover with Arthur Conan Doyle's Professor Challenger stories. Among many changes the Martians are changed into simple vampires, who suck and ingest human blood. In The Space Machine Christopher Priest presents both a sequel and prequel to The War of the Worlds due to time travel elements, which also integrates the events of the time machine. In the novel W. G. Grace's Last Case 1984 by Willie Rushton, W. G. Grace and Dr. Watson avert a second Martian invasion by attacking the Martian fleet on the far side of the moon with «bombs» containing influenza germs. The comic book Scarlet Traces 2002 begins a decade later with Great Britain utilizing the Martians' technology, and ironic to the allegory of Wells' novel, have become more powerful because of it. Eventually, this leads up to a counter-invasion aimed for Mars in its own sequel, Scarlet Traces, The Great Game 2006. Science fiction author Eric Brown wrote a short story, Oola, Oola. 2002 about an expedition to Mars, finding the truth behind H.G. Wells' novel. 
The London Pen, Le Cage de Londres, 2003, by French Canadian author Jean Pierre Gillet, takes place 100 years after a second successful Martian invasion. Humans are penned like cattle and milked regularly by their new masters, who feed on their blood. A number of people have written contemporaneously set stories that describe the same invasion from the perspectives of locations other than Britain. Notable stories of this type are Night of the Cooters by Howard Waldrop, in which a Martian war machine lands in Texas. Foreign Devils by Walter John Williams, set in China. War of the Worlds, Global Dispatches, edited by Kevin J. Anderson, an anthology of such stories ISBN War of the Worlds, New Millennium", 2005 by Douglas Niles in which the invasion is set in 2005 and focuses mainly on the American fightback. ISBN 0-765-35000-9 Tor Books in the short story Mastery of Vasania, Hayden Lee uses his appropriation to present the invasion from the perspective of the Martian invaders, also providing the link between the different nature of the two invasions presented in the book and the 2005 film Arriving from Space and Rising from the Ground. The New York Times best-selling author, Stephen Baxter, has a novel-length sequel, entitled The Massacre of Mankind, released on 19 January 2017. Indie author D. G. Lee has written two novellas, "'Sherlock Holmes v's The War of the Worlds' 2015. The original Wells invasion as experienced by Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson. The second publication takes places 20 years later. This time the protagonist is the teenage son of the journalist living in the artilleryman's subterranean metropolis. The title of this story is identical to Stephen Baxter's official release, The Massacre of Mankind, 2017. The 2019 speculative fiction book Spacecraft of the First World War, a compendium of fighting vessels of the Great Powers by William Flogg details a fictional alternate history stemming from the aftermath of the Martian invasion, in which humanity reverse engineers the leftover Martian technology to create interplanetary warships, which are documented in the style of a fictional vessel encyclopedia.